praise the Lord. We welcome you back to our reflection today. We thank the Lord because he has been with us for the last two days as we have been reflecting on the restoration of leadership. We have so far seen that God affirms us as leaders and as his children to do his work. And also he confirms us by his spirit. Actually, we saw the first day that according to Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6, so he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but my, by my spirit, declares the Lord. That is an affirmation of God's presence in the life of a leader who fears and trusts in him. Yesterday we saw uh, from Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10, who despises the day of small beginnings. Men will rejoice when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel, which means that when God affirms you, he also confirms his call for you that it is not by the might of your hand. It's not the big things that you are doing. It is uh, trusting in him and the small things that are seen as small, God will bring them to a complete completion. Let us pray. Father, as we read your word and as we meditate on it today, may you continue to bless us and to guide us. We open our hearts to you that you may minister to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, we look at confirmation of God's vision because a leader must have a vision. Uh, when you look at Habakkuk chapter 2, you'll find God telling Habakkuk that he must write the vision in his, so that people can see it. It must be written in a tablet. It's a reader must have a vision. And therefore, whether it is in your home, again, in your office, in your business, in political scene, in leadership, in church, whichever type of leadership you are in, you need to have a clear vision that can be read, that can be uh, sold to people, that can be said, and people can see this is where we are going. In Haggai chapter 1, verse 12, the Bible says, Then Zerubbabel, son of Shiltiel, Joshua, son of Josadak, the high priest and the whole remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the message of the prophet Haggai because the Lord their God had sent him and the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shiltiel, governor of Jerusalem, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josadak, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. They came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty their God on the 24th day of the sixth month. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, the third aspect of restoration is that God confirms his vision to the leader. There is a vision of the leader and the God's vision. And here we are talking about God's vision. Because if God has called you, he has confirmed you, if God has affirmed you, 
then you are not doing your own work. You are not doing your own activity. You are doing, you are leading on behalf of God. That position you are in, please, it is not yours. You have not worked for it. It is God who has appointed you there. And therefore, you are doing his work and you must uphold his vision. So when the exile returned to Jerusalem, they had a vision and the desire to rebuild the altar and the temple of God. This was the vision. This is why they were returning. Otherwise, they would have stayed where they were. But God had made them to come so that they can restore back that worship of God, the true worship of God. They managed to lay the foundation, but the work stopped due to a lot of opposition. In Haggai's message, we find these people now started concentrating on their own houses, on their own things, on their own personal things, because it seemed like God uh, was not with them. It was like, why should we face a lot of opposition? And sometimes for leaders, when they face a lot of opposition, even as a parent, when you face opposition from your children, when you are in an office, you face opposition from the workers, whatever, even in the, in the national politics, when you face a lot of opposition, then it may look like it is not what God wanted you to do. And that is why we are talking of the confirmation of God's vision for a leader. And therefore, the, in Haggai chapter 1, verse 11, uh, chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, we find that the whole remnant, led by their leaders, turned to God after they heard the message of Haggai. They were told, consider your ways. This is why you are doing a lot of things, but you are not benefiting from them. This is why you are working hard and you are not benefiting. This is why you are trying all your level best, but it is not working because my house is in ruins. Because the vision that I had for you, you are not fulfilling it. But we see a turnaround when they got the confirmation. And the, the prophet tells them that I am with you. That is what God is saying. I am with you. God confirms this work you are doing, I am with you. May the Lord help us as we think about our positions, that where you are, God is saying he's with you. It doesn't matter the amount of opposition. It doesn't matter the amount of things that are not going right. The Lord is saying, I am with you. If it is God's vision, may you continue to fulfill it. Don't go away. Don't turn away from the Lord. Miles Monroe says that he thinks that the greatest gift that God ever gave to man is not the gift of sight, but the gift of vision. He says that sight is a function of the eyes, but vision is a function of the heart. Vision is a function of the heart. You are hearing from God, and so you are leading people with the vision of God. You are taking them where God wants them to be taken. This means that we have to be keen on listening to the voice of God and obeying it like these people, Zerubbabel and Joshua and the remnant, they obeyed God. And when they obeyed God, we are told that God stirred up their spirits to go down to work. When we obey, when we hear the voice of God, God stirs our hearts up. We want to work for him. We want to move out and, and do the things that we felt they were very hard. Uh, sometimes back I was sharing with somebody how sometimes it was hard when I was involved with the life ministry because you are required to go and share the gospel with people who are not even uh, Christians or who don't 
who, who don't agree with the Christian faith. And it was a difficult thing. Sometimes we would go to do the Jesus film, but there was great fulfillment and great joy whenever we saw people turning to Christ because that is God's vision. Sometimes we want to speak to the people that we know, to the people that we think need to hear the gospel. We, in our offices, we don't want to speak about God, our God, because uh, we, we are of different faiths. But what is God's vision? Why are you here? Why are you there? Ask yourself, what is God's vision for you in that place? May God help you. May God help me. May God help us to see his vision. We are always faced with the temptation to pursue our dreams and our plans and then ask God to bless them. This is common, that this is what I want to do. May God bless these plans. God's vision for our lives should be the heartbeat that pumps through everything which we do. We must listen to God. We must know what does God want me to do in this situation. When God stirred up the hearts of the Israelites, the work continued up to its completion. Even when the older generation was crying because the temple was not as magnificent as the one of Solomon, God confirmed that the glory of the new temple would be more, more, Actually, the revised standard version says the splendor of the new temple would be greater than the one that was there during the Solomon's uh, temple. And therefore, each one of us was created by God for a purpose. And that is why we always say you are where you are because God created you for that purpose. My question to you is, are you, feeling, are you fulfilling God's vision in your life? Is it clear to you why you are here on this earth? Is it clear to you why you are there where you are? As I said in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4, the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain in tablets, so that Arana may read it. May you memorize this verse, and as you memorize it, I leave you with a challenge from a quote by John Maxwell. For you to think about as you serve God in the area of leadership which he has given you. And it says, many pastors or leaders fail to see God's vision fulfilled because they do not have a strategy for fulfilling that vision. I hope you are going to think, and you are going to think about why am I here? Why did God place me here? Thank God for the level that you are in, for the position that you are holding, for the leadership position that you are holding, and ask God, can you help me to fulfill your vision, to, to understand your vision for me in this place? May you yield, may we yield to God. All these things, as I always say, you cannot do them when you don't know this God, when you don't have a relationship with him. And it is my prayer that as you continue to focus and to think about whatever we are sharing this week, may the Lord touch us so that we may renew our faith in him. May he stir up our hearts, not only to do, but also to live a godly life to give ourselves and our lives to him. Father, we thank you. We praise you for you have given us a vision. You have called us and placed each one of us with a purpose in this world. Whichever place that we are in, whatever we are involved in, from our homes to our workplaces, 
Lord, we pray that each one of us will realize that they are leaders and they are here to help people fulfill your vision. And therefore, stir up our hearts that we may be able to serve you with vigor and may we know you, God. Bless us and give us a blessed time. Give us victory in whatever we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let us memorize Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4.